Okay, we are recording. Uh, as always, it is Sunday. I am Brian Kynes, the creator of the Tales of Ulrin uh, campaign setting. Uh, we use Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition to tell our story, and the awesome folks that are joining me here today help me write it uh, one game at a time. Uh, I'll go ahead and start here at the top. We're here beside me is Danny McGuffey. Be playing the role of Bastille and also Dayhan in this instance. Um, just below him is Sean Nelson. Sean will be playing uh, primarily the role of Shaw Day, uh, the changeling monk rogue badass shadow jumping fool, and will be helping out making decisions with Tamara while uh, Heather and Kara are not with us. Um, and then just right below me, of course, as always, Jeremy Keaton. He'll be helping out with Silouin, trying to make uh, some moves for her and position her around the ship. And then he'll also be primarily playing the role of Merc, which is piloting Brahmus, the celestial construct. Okay, guys. So, <clears throat> I think there's nothing else to wait for. I'm going to go ahead and start sharing the screen and we'll jump back into this. Does that sound good? All right. Advanced share sound portion of screen share. Okay, is that coming up all right for everybody? Thumbs up for yes. Got it. Okay, good deal. All right, then let's go ahead and move everybody around here a little bit so I can see you all better. I like it. Okay. I'm going to have some music playing in the background. Let me know if it is anywhere close to anything but disturbing. Does that level right there sound okay? You guys can hear me talking. It's not overpowering, correct? Okay, because that's the goal. <laughs> All right. So, we have Merc down here, which he's doing a, a, a Flex Armstrong... Uh, Captain America on the helicopter, some some really interesting shit. And it's great that you're using those touch attacks and spells at the same time, the shocking grasp. Uh, what'd you do, inflict wounds? Badass stuff, sir. So we're going to say, <clears throat> and help walk me through this. I know number three here was the one that was laying on top of the globe. And that's one of the reasons why it hadn't blown off the ship. Because remember, we're sailing along at a pretty decent rate of speed here as Aeolus is on the wheel trying to maneuver just about 150 foot above the tree line trying to get in and out of fog and, and lose these some bitches. Uh, one of those four was dead. Dayhon got it with the uh, ballista. Which one was that? Because we have two that died. We have number two that has been killed and number five that has been killed. I think that one by Dayhon now was the one that flew up to the ship. Okay, to yeah, you're right. Off. Okay, and I think it was hanging down in this area and came up. Now, that one was gone when you came back, and you came back through that um, chrono jolt spell. You took it out on your way. Now, you guys have done some wear and tear on shit, and especially the main big bad up here at the front of the ship. You guys have knocked down significantly, whereas it is bloody currently. Okay? Just to kind of be a refresher and keep that in your mind. Um, I believe that, yes, Alex decided for Dauntus to do that Eldritch Blasting out of the cannon. So when it comes up to his turn, Danny, I will let you be the one that decides how you want him to use that cannon. Okay, buddy? Alrighty. And mind you, he also has his own explosives. I know. He's got all kinds of... <laughs> He's got all kinds of fun shit, dude. Okay. Uh, you were still up in that crow's nest, Sade, using the crossbow, correct? Awesome. All right. So, let's go ahead. Now, Jeremy, walk me through. I'm going to say number four is one of them that you had a hold of. Okay? And number three was the other one that you had a hold of the wing of. As it's actually flipped, it's not facing us like this picture is. It's actually flipped down with its wings covering over the aura of protection. And you have a hold of, I'll say, about the wing over here. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Number four, sleep. So I was able to kind of move it over with me. 
Number three is knock prone on down on the, on the uh, dome. I got both of those because him being prone was the only reason. Number one, shadow didn't affect everybody down there. Okay. We'll make a note here that number four is sleep. Was it sleeped or was it just dazed? And I know she, it's because Miyasha did that spell to it. Oh, uh, hypnotic pattern. Hypnotic pattern. Okay, yeah, that's it. Dazed. Otherwise, it could pass dead. Yes. And keep in mind, guys, that any kind of forced contact or things of that nature, if something spins its turn to wake it up or someone hits it, they snap out of that shit. But the reason I'm letting Jeremy have that is he was already tied to it and connected to it beforehand. Okay, so saying number four is in a weird state. Okay, let's go ahead and do that then. The next one up would have been P number one, Periton number one. It's back here in the back. Okay. So, so Bast, is, Bast has actually not had an initiative role with these guys because he just popped back in. Okay, so the way I had it, you were at first at initi initiative. Okay. And when you popped back in, you were in the day state. You would be at the start of the next turn. Okay? We've already went through on this turn. You, Drayden, and Merc just went. And now this will be the fourth person in this turn. All right? So, let's go ahead and jump into this. Number one. Sees this one laying down here over top of the globe. Um, I want to do something just for the hell of it. Sean, roll me a concentration of a 1d20 and a 1d6 to see if uh, Medelia is able to hold this protection up. I, I forgot to do that to end the last time. Yeah, hold on one moment. Let me get that for you. It's all good, buddy. Do your thing. One d twenty and a one d six. Yes. That's a fourteen. Okay. Okay, just barely made it, okay, with a 14 was the DC, okay. So um, this is a new optional rule that I would like to try out tonight. I saw a guy online the other day that implemented this, and I really liked it. Um, you know when a person is swinging and they hit your armor class exactly? That is a half damage attack. And to get the full damaging attack, you would have to do the next step higher. Okay, so we're also going to do that for DCs and things of that nature when it comes to spells, saving throws, all kinds of fun shit like that. You know how a lot of times where if someone tries to do something to you like a charm person, I'll explain to your character what they're seeing, what they're emotionally going through. I will up the degree of that depending on if you roll that exact number or not. Okay? All right, so with that, you notice that this aura protection begins to flutter in and out of its consistency starts to weaken and gets a little bit less of a sheen to it. It's a little bit less present as it was before with that roll. Um, with that, the periton is going to go. It is going to fly up on here and it's going to land on this other crow's nest that is now vacant. Okay. Let me do that real quick. The Shadow Wolf passed over Miyasha at that point. Um, Jeremy, would you roll a saving throw for Miyasha? Of wisdom would be a 1d20 and a 1d6, and tell me what you get. A 20, but it's a 21 altogether. 21 succeeds. So as it passes over her, that that wave of necrotic hands and moaning twisted faces that seem to be going yeah, yeah, 
seem to wash over top of her. And as she seems to fight them, she does a backwards cartwheel and kind of spins as she is extraordinarily acrobatic and is able to dodge at least half of the damage. Oh shit. 14, yes, okay. Although some of it does tear at her, you can see some of the chains of her chakram getting caught up into it. Um, she is able to elude it, and she does not become stunned, and she does not lose her color. Um, as this creature lands up here on top of this, it starts to call out. Okay? Almost as if it's talking to the big one over here. As if it's screeching and giving it, getting some kind of permission or it's almost like chanting something at it. It's very feral. You're not quite sure what is going on here. Uh, the only person I think that might have a chance of understanding what this is would be Sade. Someone that's been on airships a lot and has fought avian creatures. I'd like for you to do me a history check with a DC of 17. That's a 22. Okay. You've seen this typical kind of thing before, but never out of this kind of a primitive, wicked, evil, spirited creature. It is empowering the big bad here in some way. Um, you can see the feathers flail out on the other one a little bit more. The colors intensify. The glow in the eyes brightens. And with that, you can see drool begin to drip down from the sharpened teeth of this creature as it has done something to awaken it. Okay? And that will be the end of that one's turn. You go ahead and mark that off. Okay, next up. <clears throat> Paradigm number three. That is the one that's laying on top. Now, it was, um, the one beside you was dazed. This one was not. It was prone. It was laying across the top of this force field. Okay, so, as it is laying there, once its head starts scrambling around, and imagine what this looks like to people inside of the globe. Okay? As Aeolus is like, everybody just try to hang on! As he's trying to steer the ship on the Lodestar, he's looking up, and no more than six or seven foot above his head is this, this, failing wall of force and this creature's head is snapping down and rubbing its face it's got those crazy like stag like eyes looking down through it and these things seem to be wanting blood okay as it does it's going to rear back it's going to do a beak attack and then it's going to try to do two claw attacks against this shield to break through to get to the people on the other side okay and I opened up with a natural 20 because sometimes that's just what you do. Damn it. Okay, so. I have a set amount of hit points that this thing has. And we have to see what happens here. Because if this fails, it's going to get interesting. Just a moment here, guys. Let me make sure I'm doing this right. Okay. Okay, 20 hits, let's see what it does. Twelve times two is twenty-four plus things twenty-eight points of damage to the field. Okay, Sean, I'd like for you to do another um, concentration check. With her this time, the DC is going to be 16. Twenty two. That's awesome. Okay, good. The field still holds. All right. Um, Trying to decide. I don't know if you could tell if a force field was bloodied or not. That may be metagaming just a little bit. 
we'll just say it's a uh, it's not as bright as it was dude <laughs> all right all right with that he's got another attack that's a natural three so karma is something no that did not work and now let's go ahead and do the final gore attack the horns uh that does hit because the force field's not really that difficult to hit let's go ahead and see what the horns do five nine that's not bad okay roll me that, that concentration check one more time sean please Don't say one. You Ooh, the, no, no, it was close. It was close. <laughs> it was like a one, and then it turned. So it's a total of twenty-five. Okay, God, man. I even saw it on your face. It's like no, Sean. No, let's not. That's cool. Okay. I was, I was a damn near perfect roll. <laughs> All right, buddy. Resist it once again. Um, Merc, they are struggling to maintain this shield. Okay. And you've got that creature by the wing, and it's just flailing down. And the only reason it has these attacks is one, it's laying right on top of it. The shield's not moving. I would have gave it disadvantage, and you being having it somewhat grappled, but you only have a hold of its wing. It's not like you're committing both hands to it. It just can't go anywhere else. Okay? Which is a double-edged sword, because that's great and all, but that also means it can't fly off the ship. So it's a it's, it's tough situation. Let's go ahead and say that is the end of that one's turn. That was uh, P3. P3. And now it is Silowin's turn. So move the action over to the front of the ship. After losing her argument with Dauntus, which is far better at shooting the arcane cannon than she was, um, I believe Tamara had blessed everyone here, giving them a 1d4 and was still able to maintain and hold that up. Um, Silwyn, it is your go. Jeremy, just give me an idea what you would like for her to do. You can put into this as much or as little as you want. You are muted. Wah, 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 wah. You're right on, right on. <laughs> if I recall, that Eldritch Cannon left a pretty decent hole in this thing, didn't it? If I recall... You could bypass this defenses with a minus four to hit if you try to hit that section. Well played, sir. I was going to say, because I, she sees that opening, she's, she's going to want to stick stick her glaive. Nice, nice. And okay. I think it's going to come by the by way of a bolt and a gale force descent. Look Straight at you. Down to it. You are making Heather proud right now, sir. Okay, let's go ahead and do this then. Let's go to her. She's like, fuck yeah. Silowin, there you are, young lady. Okay, let's go ahead and get the Lance graphics up. Let's go ahead, and I think you have the Gale. Where's that? Where's that? Where's that? There it is. Love doing this shit. Her name's going to look backwards, but I don't care. We're going to do something here because it doesn't make sense that she's facing the back way from the creature. We're going to move her. <laughs> well, she just straight up backflips in the air. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Her name's backwards, but I don't give a shit for this. We're just going to do it. <laughs> okay. So with that, yeah, she backflips right, Jeremy. All right. She bounds into the air and then comes down on top of the creature. Yeah, that's kind of nice. I like that a lot. Okay. And I want you to go ahead and roll for your attack. So that took half of your movement, or 15 foot. And it also, uh, you remember the modifier differences, correct? I think it adds 1d6 for every 10 foot, correct? Okay. And her vault at this level is at 40 foot. How far do you think, it's, how far of a drop do you think she would have gotten from 40 foot? Is that thing like you know 10 what? foot in the air? Well, you know, here's the thing. It's about 20 foot above you guys. Well, no, it, it came down because it was attacking people and shit at the cannon, wasn't it? So I'm going to say if you jump up 40, you can come down 
you can come down 30 of that. I'm going to put it in that 10 foot range where the top of its head is like 10 foot off the ship, but its feet are more like four. So, so I'll give, I'll give you 30 foot of that. If you're happy with that. Uh, I think she's got a plus. She's got a plus eleven to hit, haven't she? I believe so. Minus four. Uh, plus seven. With the minus four penalty for aiming for the spot. Yes. Okay. And what is the total roll? Have you rolled it already? Not yet. Okay. Let me know. I'm, I'm one edge of my seat, sir. Need to know. Be a 19. 19 total? Yes. Or plus seven. Yeah. Okay. And does she have weapon specialization? <laughs> she does. Who is gagging? <laughs> You need to have a CPR trained person available. That was awesome. <laughs> That's a 22. <laughs> okay. That hits and breaches. And the reason being is its defenses aren't taken in consideration here. Only its ability to dodge and block. You are bypassing its defenses by taking that minus four of hitting this small open area. That is a breaching hit, sir. Please roll damage on the big bad. 3d6 for the fall. Yep. 1d8 for spear. Glade. Glade. Yes. Yep. And she gets a plus what to her attack? I don't even have that. Mm, I don't know, sir. Let me, uh, let me see real quick if I can find it. Just roll one d an extra 1d6 and we'll call that our modifier. Oh. Nope. Dice are nice that way. That would be seven. Fifteen points of damage. Fifteen total? Okay. You're all low, sir. I'm using some new dice. I haven't quite broken that on the high side yet. <laughs> right on. Okay. <laughs> so as you land, now normally you strike at this thing as you're going down okay so we have to assume that now you're back on the ground by the underneath of this creature okay oh, she won't be on its back well now if you were going to jump onto its back and stuff that would be different now we said that <laughs> the opening was near around the chest area so when she jumps up and strikes out the spear oh, i thought it was a uh, through no. i thought the shot went in and then come out no, sir. Gotcha. Now, that would have been a different roll altogether. It would have been an acrobatics check to land on top. i tell you what I'll do. I'll tell you what I'll do. If you can roll me an athletics check to land on top of that, because with the addition of the four, you hit it pretty good. I'm going to make up the DC right now, and I'm not going to tell you what it is. And if you can do that, I'll say you've landed on top of this thing, and you're able to stab down into it with the spear still in it. Okay, that's fair. Okay. You know Go what ahead. her mod is on. I'm just roll 1d20 and 1d6. Get my twisted T dice out. Okay. Yeah, 17. 18 is the number. So, close. So, as you were trying to get in there a little bit, just the way the thing's body shifted, from the weight of the strike, had it kind of turned sideways like a plane just trying to roll out a little bit, and you end up screwing down the side of it and landing below. Uh, with a 17, I'm not going to have you landing prone, though. You're able to land. You, you were close. Okay? So now you are beneath of it, and you can reach up. It is within range of your glaive if you're striking overhead, and you, st you still have your movement minus 15, and one attack is gone. It's standing next? there. She's going to try to stick it again. Okay. Go ahead and roll for your attack. It has claws and things to defend itself with now. Another 19. 19 hits, but it does not breach. Go ahead and roll damage for that. It's 
CA plus B6. 10 points of damage. Nice. Okay, and as you do, as a reaction, I would like for you to do a wisdom saving throw. As you have landed in the shadow. Oh boy. What is it? I don't care what kind of bonus that she's got. Nothing that one. Oh my. Oh my. Okay. Yeah, the DC was, was way more than that. Um, when you land and you get ready to raise up your glaive, you feel dread. Now, Silowin knows these creatures, and if you guys remember, she was the one that yelled out at the beginning of this contest to stay away from the shadows. And I think that would be a great theatrical movie moment here because she wanted to lance and stay on top of this creature. She was trying. Go could ahead. I argue, could I argue that she might get advantage on this since she knows what to, what to, what to expect? I'll leave it in Danny's hands. If Danny rolls a 1 through 5 on a 1d20, um, I will possibly give you advantage just because you're smiling about it. And I'm not one to try to fuck a guy. So go ahead. One. You're shitting me. You fuckers. I tell you what. You know what? That's fine. Fine, fine. See it? You know, I don't... I'm, you know, I'm not even looking. I'm, I'm pouting. Um, <laughs> roll... Roll one more time to... And if you roll a two, that's just karma. Just so you know. He's like three. So, not as bad. It's an 11. Oh shit. Now DC was 17, so what do you got to add to it? Uh, whatever she's got. I don't know what she's got. Okay, charisma is what. Saving she... throw? Yeah, it's a wisdom saving throw. Alright, so she'll get plus four from Tamara. Is it 1d4 or just four? It's a straight four because it's, it's a bonus depending on her charisma modifier. Okay, so, so now you're now you're at 15. 15. You got two what's, more to go. What's the bless do? Uh, Sean, 1d4 to attack rolls and what else for bless? I, it's just the 1d4 to attack rolls and saving throws. But I don't think I cast what, Bless. What is Silowin's, uh Hold on for a minute. One thing at a time, guys. Because I remember I cast... Uh, the thing that Tamara currently has is um, Beacon of Hope. I don't remember. Did I cast Bless? I don't remember. No, I think it was Beacon of Hope. Yeah, yeah. The current Beacon effect she has is Beacon of Hope. So she get, they get advantage in wisdom saving throws, and all healing does maximum healing. Okay, so here's the thing. You already had your advantage on the saving throws, so the Beacon of Hope's not helping you. So you well, got... I've four. got the 15 altogether, and uh -huh. I haven't rolled anything for her bonuses. Are you calling that a D4 or a D6? For wisdom... I don't think she has a high wisdom. I'm going with a D4 on that one. I'm not trying to tell her dick you. I mean, I know that that's not a high Oh, stat you're, you're good. I don't know what her, what her stats are right off the top of my head. Yeah. Two. So 17. Okay. All right. You know what? Yeah. So, <laughs> this is one of those things where I'm going to... It's a 17. You just passed. You're going to get half damage from this. I'll take it. Okay. Just... Okay, <laughs> it's but it's not going to, but the effect is not going to touch on you, all right, because you're in the area. So it's almost like rolling a dexterity save for half. So here, you know what this looks like. And as this is going on, um, Sade, you see Silowin damn near lose her composure in this moment. As she meant to grapple on to the top of the periton, she came off, just didn't plan to hit just right, got a great hit on it, but the thing seemed to shift, and as she was getting ready to go down and land, land that circle, you could see the fear on her face. And when she landed, hero style, with the glaive in the deck of the ship, 
All of a sudden, the arms and the twisted hair start wrapping around her in the splinted, moaning faces. Um, she starts sticking her head up as if she's trying to keep her chin above water. And she's like, no, I'm not. And she's pushing away and she starts singing like a song, but she's singing it like a scared child. And as she's doing that, she's able to combat back. You see the colors flicker on her skin a little bit. She begins a little bit, looks a little pale, but then the color comes back to her cheeks. Uh, Silouin is takes five points of necrotic damage and was not stunned by the spell. I would have been real upset if I was the one to kill Silouin of everybody. Yeah, right. But no, that was really, that was a nice back and forth. I don't... I like engaging like that. That's fun, dude. All right. So, with that, um, you still have, you still want to do your swing? I. Uh, because you fought back. You made the saving throw. No, I already did. She only gets two attacks this turn. Oh, that's right. Okay, yeah, you did, and we took it. Okay. Um, yes, you have a bonus action. Damage. The bonus action was the gale force that you added to it. Yeah. Uh, you have more movement. You want to get the fuck out of that circle now, or what do you want to do? Oh, she's going. She's on backflip, fall, roll, combat roll, wiggle. I don't care what she's going to do. She's getting out of that damn circle. Okay. So, having said that, you're not a rogue. So you can't just back rip, flip, and roll without this thing getting an attack of opportunity against you. Agreed. So as she does push off of the glaive and goes to move backwards, it is going to get an opportunity attack. That will use its reaction, so keep that in mind, okay? I was going to say, I think she'd be a lot more worried about that shadow than she would yeah. with anything if that thing's going to throw at her. Um, natural 5 does not hit. So, that turn is over with. Is there anything else you want to do with some movement? I put you right here on the outside of it. Is there somewhere else you'd like to go with her, Jeremy? That's good. You good with it? Okay, and let me buff her down a little bit now that the show's over. <laughs> I just want a dragon over top of my head permanently. That's what I want. <laughs> okay. So there she is. We'll move her into uh, this space right here just for game's sake. Okay. Next. That was Silouin. Let me mark off that fourth turn okay next one is going to be the blood seeker and then it's miyasha collectively everyone kind of decide what they like for miyasha to do okay now here's the big bads turn okay this is the blood seeker monstrous peritons turn all right now i know it is focused on silouin i have that written down here and it has the ability to do a couple different things Mm. Yeah, I need to go ahead and do this. As a bonus action, it's going to put Hunter's Mark on Silouin. Okay? It only makes sense. Damn. And now you guys are going to see something a little bit new. As this other bird is over here crying out and almost chanting to this one in some kind of ritual as it's flapping its wings up and down, the large monstrous periton opens its wings up and its eyes grow even brighter as all the hands from the shadows start to reach up. And just for a minute, all of a sudden, they seem to slither back down as if there's fear, like there's something coming that is scaring everybody, even these undead spirits these wraith-like beings as something happens here. And it is right here. A massive lightning bolt is summoned from the creature. From the skies above. It is going to land in the area of the shadow and around it as it hits. This will strike Tamara, Valdera, Dauntus, 
and Silwin. I need all four of them to make a dexterity saving throw. Go ahead and I do that. I that 10 foot of Samara. Don't forget the uh, plus four. Right. Or no, I... That's a wisdom Samara, saving throw. I think Samara's got a five. I think she's got a 20 in charisma. Yeah, but the thing is that can, now it's a charisma. Does it go towards dexterity saving throws as it's well? It's a the saving throws all across the board. Really? Any, anybody within 10 feet of her gets plus on their saving throws depending on her charisma modifier. Promise okay, well, the same thing. Well, you and Valdera would. Dauntus, unfortunately, would not. Um, this thing... Um, I'm going to have you roll also, Sean, because you're up above this thing in an angle. But the most you can take is half or none because you're barely in the radius. This is wild lightning coming down. So it's not going to affect you as much as them, but it does partially get into your square. Okay. Once well, this is not going to, because obviously to get out of this with a dex, you've got to roll out of the area. He's not leaving the gun. That's right. That's right. Well, what do you? Th I'll let you be Donus. What do you think he'll do here? I think he'll hold on to the gun, especially since it's uh, being it's a lightning gun. He'll take a chance that maybe it'll help. Yeah. Now, do you think that's how his character would do? He's not the bravest person, my friend. Uh, Why don't you roll a charisma check versus... Actually, knowing him, as much stuff as he's carrying, he would definitely dive. That's what I'm saying. Roll, yeah, roll, a, roll a charisma just to see how his gumption is. If you pass a DC of 15, you're brave enough to hang out. If not, you're jumping the fuck out of the way. He's 17, but I'd like to make an intelligence check since he's got enough bombs on him that that might be a bad idea anyway. Uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and say you can do what you want to do. Okay. Um, so, Jeremy's like, did I hear bombs? <laughs> yeah, you did. And there's a yeah, graphic you, for it, too, because your DM rocks. I I'm think saying. he is definitely going to roll. Okay. Uh, go ahead and roll for him. And, guys, I'm just going to have some fun. The DC for this? 18. He didn't get too far from the cannon with a natural five. No, he did not. So, all, yeah. So you did not pass the dexterity saving throw. You're going to take the full blunt of this. Jeremy, what about Silwin? He rolled 17. Okay, so 18 was a DC. You'll be taking full from this. Shaw Day, what did you roll? Uh, dirty 20. You are able to slip back. You're only going to, you'll take no damage from this. Um, Valdera. Damn it, Valdera. 16. I take full damage from this. And, um, please roll for Tamara. Uh, 1d20 and a 1d4. Let me know what you got, Sean. What did? You, uh, what was that? One d twenty and a one d four for Tamara. She's back here behind the bird. She's kind of hard to see. She's gonna see if she has to get out of the way as well. Ooh, that's not good. She's got a six total. Okay, no, she takes full damage from this. Okay, so. She has to roll concentration. Yep. DC's 18 on the concentration as well. And that's a constitution, right? Yep. Okay, so she gets plus three to that. Ah, oh, that's a 10 total, so her concentration drops. So, Shit. beacon of hope drops. Okay, just a minute. Let me do some damage first here and get this figured out. Six, seven. Mm. Damn it! Okay. So, here's what it looks like, guys. When that spell comes down and lights up that area in a flash, everything gets hit. Now, everything that gets hit by this is not allowed to take reactions 
on its on their next turn as the energy keeps coursing through you. So if you're someone that's got hit by this, please write down and take a note. You do not get reactions on your next turn as if this were shocking grasp. Does that mitigate uh, current reactions too? Um, I was just thinking about it. I don't know all her reactions, but I know she has that one where she can try to dodge. To try to reduce damage, I think it is. Who, Silwyn does? Yeah, I, I keep thinking fleet of foot. I don't know it's not fleet of foot. Yeah, but I think since this hits you, uh, yeah, it's going to be from this point on. Okay? So that was 23 points of damage. Michael Jordan damage. All right? So let me go ahead and mark some of this down. Tamara took you Got hit by the goat? Yeah, I know. Right? The goat came <laughs> slammed it down. Um, Dauntus, you poor little bastard. 23. Um, Sade, you take none. Silwyn. 23. And then who else we got? We got Valdera. A lot of people on these papers, guys. Just one minute here. Where are you at? Minus 23. Now, the good news is, and I just realized this, Valdera puts her hands down and looks up and lets out like a feral cry when this actually comes down as if she's Godzilla and this is Tokyo like this did something to help her and that large great sword that she has seems to have markings on it to begin to run up and down the form of the blade and it begins to have a sheen of static and lightning flickering across it as her hair seems to stand up on end and she seems to be empowered by some by this in some way this is something I don't think you guys have actually seen before on her. Um, react to it however you would like. I'm going to write down here ignited. Okay, awesome. Cool. All right. Um, with that, the creature is going to move. Let me go ahead and take off the lightning. And then let me go ahead and take off Tamara's spell real quick, unfortunately. Oh, that's going to be under the uh, the map. That's going to be under map effects. Let's go ahead and do... Uh, that one. Okay. That spell fades off as Tamir's concentration has been broken. Um, with your movement, Sade, let's talk about that in real time here because in our game, when you dodge out of the way of a spell, this subtracts from your movement that's available to you at the beginning of your next turn. Okay? Because it has to come from somewhere. That's something they don't do much in D&D. So for you, ma'am, where I'm going to say you only had to move a very little bit. Do you want to be hanging off the side of the crow's nest on the other side like you're getting ready to bail out of a hot air balloon? Or how do you want to have reacted to that? You would have had to move back this direction. Yeah, I mean, if I could somehow stay on the crow's nest, it's fine. But if I have to jump over the side, yeah, I could do that. I would say you jump off to the side right here and are mm -hmm. hanging on that ledge. For the hell of it, do me a athletics or acrobatics, either one you want. Uh. <laughs> do you like that sound? He didn't sound happy about that, guys. I've, I'm not actually not good. Uh, okay. Acrobatics it is. And that's a 21. Okay, the 21's good. Because this shit could have went south really quick. There, there's ropes enough there. We would have caught your foot in something. But you, you go to jump over the side with a 21. You're making it look pretty easy. You're just clinging to the side like a cliffhanger. Like you're climbing that shit in the, in the healthy, balanced gym. Mm -hmm. Okay, so without getting too lost here, the periton is going to raise back up away from people. Which is great because people don't have reactions now and they can't attack me if opportunity as I'm climbing. Sade can. Sade can, but she also jumped over to the side and is hanging on the edge of a thing to jump out of the way of the bowling <laughs> bolt. Now, unless you want to debate that, you're more than welcome, Sean, because I am a good listener, if nothing else. That's fine. <laughs> He's like, whatever, man. I think you could let go and pop a shot off. 
So now you're his defense lawyer. Is that how this is working, Danny? I see the grin <laughs> on your face, you bastards. I see it. I mean, you know, when it's oh, my turn. Oh, here it goes. Oh, now. See what you did? You opened we'll up see. We'll see. We'll see. So, okay, let's have the debate now and get over with so we can move forward. So what are we I saying? Mean, I mean, it's... I'm listening. Go technically, ahead. It's technically with... I mean, an opportunity attack would be if it was within range of me. I mean, I don't think I would get one. I mean, I could. It would... But I, if, I mean, if you would allow it, I would do it at disadvantage because... Well, <laughs> it would cancel... It would cancel out because I have insightful fighting. That's fine. <laughs> I will, I will let you do it with true disadvantage if you can prove to me that that crossbow uh -huh. is a one-handed weapon. Yeah, it is. It's a hand crossbow. Then I will let you have an opportunity to attack against this thing with dis true disadvantage. Okay. Just because you're Stallone hanging on the things like, hang on! You know, and you're trying to shoot at the same time. So, let's see what you got, man. Put an arrow in this uh, one. Okay, well, uh... Uh... I'm going to do even a bigger uh, favor after that. Go ahead. I mean, more. with disadvantage, the total is uh, 25 to hit. Oh, my. Really? Let me make sure. Yeah. I mean, this thing's this thing's beefed up a little bit. That hits, but it does not breach. So go ahead That's and fine. roll the damage. Now, since you didn't call it out, this is an average arrow, correct? Yeah, it's just an average one. So it's time to say it's not. It's nine total points of damage. Okay. That doesn't seem like it was enough to find purchase into the actual creature, but it did take a chunk off the exterior of it. Okay? Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. So, I'm going to do you a favor, buddy, because you forgot about this. Mm -hmm. This thing has to roll 2d4 bleeding damage at the beginning right. of the turn, as you've got two other arrows sticking out of it. Mm -hmm. Here this, this, this thing is like a fucking pincushion because of you and your little crow's nest. Um, I'll, I'll let you roll the damage on him. Okay. 2d4. Hey, eight damage. Nice, buddy. <laughs> With that, I'm going to go ahead and say it is official. This creature looks rough, guys. There's blood dripping out of it. And as the blood drips out and it starts falling down into that pool of shadows down below it, you see the hands start to rise back up again now that the lightning thread is gone. Okay. With that, who's up next? It's this. This is fun, dude. Fuck yeah, Bloodseeker Six. Down. Okay, so now we have Miyasha, and after Miyasha, Shade's on deck. Then Dehan. Just keep that in mind, okay? Start thinking about stuff, guys. For Miyasha, what are we thinking, here, folks? We want to try some other kind of fancy little spell. We want to get the shockers out and attack some shit. Does she want to do some kind of dance and try to distract these things? What's the group think she would be trying to do? I know that hypnotic pattern was helpful as hell. What was it? That hypnotic pattern. Okay. I mean, and that, what's cool is, and I don't think Alex realized it, but that's not just her casting the hypnotic pattern spell. That's a dance thing that she does. It's called a, a, a luring distraction. And it, she works on people that can perceive her. So it has the effect of that spell, but it's her doing all kinds of cool, sick shit, and things can't help but stare at her. So that's that's the, the flavor of it. So she's doing some kind of ridiculous breakdance shit <laughs> down here that, that only demonic antlered birds like, because that's D&D. And we're going to go ahead and make a DC for this. Um, just for shits and giggles, Jeremy. Roll me 1d20 and a 1d8. Because her performance, she gets sh mega bonuses on performance. Twenty-five. A twenty-five. You vicious bastards. Between Danny oh, helping 20, him and she... Oh, oh, you took it down by one. Such a heart, Jeremy. I really appreciate you, buddy. All right, so let's say... Who can... Hey, hmm. 
I'm going to make that the potency of the spell itself as far as what it does if they're watching you. But I'm going to give her a free action to do something to draw attention to her from these creatures. So I want you to roll me a charisma check. Just a 1d20 and a 1d8. Uh, and tell me how high a number it is. The higher the number, the more these creatures are possibly looking at her when she does this. I think that's a fair way to do it. 16. 16. Okay. I was going to give you 1 out of 10, 2 out of 15, 3 out of 20. I'm going to give you 2, and I'll make it these two here that are closest to you. Okay? Well, what about that one? That one's already dazed, so... This one is? It, yeah, I don't think it could perceive anything if it wanted to. Okay, this one here is pretty focused on biting through the shell. So... It's going to be down. This one's going to be... This one was attacking him. I mean, I hate to say it. Well, this one here was really focused on her, but it took up into the air. I'm going to give you the big bad in this one. Beautiful. I mean, it's only fair. But what really sucks for you is, with the legendary resistance, it does not work on the big bad. But you made it burn one. So good job. As it was going to. <laughs> it was going to, but he had to burn one of his legendary resistances to fail that. The other one works, and that is uh, Hypnotic Pattern. I've got my spells pulled up here. Let me go to this real quick. Alphabetical order is great until you have to get into the fucking H's. And then the H's end with a Y, have a Y next, too. It's a later H. Create a twisting pattern with colors and tiger stripes that weave through. <laughs> okay. Pattern appears on a failed save. Charmed for duration. The creature is incapacitated and has a speed of zero. So guess what that means? The ship's flying, right? The spell ends for an affected creature if you take any damage or if someone else uses an action to shake them free. And this is concentration. So as she does that, and this creature seems to be stunned with her, it's in line here. Okay, I'm trying to put them in line of their shadows, right, Jeremy? If it's in line here, this one's down low, attacking Dayhon, right? Actually picking him up that had him grappled. That's right. Thank you. It's hard to remember all this shit when you only play once every three months. It's kind of ridiculous. I'm not bitter. This one's laying on top of the field. This one is held down low by you. There is nothing that I can see that is going to con contact this creature as the speed goes to zero. And as that happens, okay, you guys see this. Bye-bye. <laughs> as its speed drops to zero, it's almost like the cheap shit in those video games where it does like something that blows your character off the screen. You're like, well, fuck. What? <laughs> That's what just happened to my beautiful bird. I hate that. Now, kind of, kind of that, like the one game where you get hit by a really big giant go flying to Mars. Yes. As that happens, though, Danny, I need you to do a wisdom saving throw as the shadow passed over you is flying off the ship. Let's be fair. I'm getting my gut punches out as we're going through the end of this. Danny's like, yeah, oh, sh oh. <laughs> Let me look at through something real quick. Hey, as long as it's not okay, yeah, I don't get an advantage on that, but I got a 16 total. <clears throat> All right, Sean, roll the DC for this. Let's see if you can screw Danny over. He rolled a 16 on his wisdom throw 1d20 and a 1d6. a 10 total yes damn it i just i think you guys just i think you you just have to get me no it's shitty hey i'm rolling on D, &D beyond so i have no control over what the dice is. <laughs> yeah. I, got, I got those fuckers to blame for this mess okay all right this insult to my perfect trap all right so it passes over you danny and you feel the voices coming at you 
I'm going to say Passover real quick. You kind of bear down. Uh, you wish the Phoenix was still up. It could have helped you a little bit, but it wasn't. And as you hunker down, you can feel the, the cold claws go across your body. And you feel them almost trying to... You always have choked up emotions. And it well, starts to get into your soul, but you're able to push back. Actually, he would be pretty pretty easily pushing through because he passed it once before and he has the Sutaga because of where it tried to fear him before. That's true. That's true. You would have had advantage on that roll. Um, you take four points of necrotic damage as it washed over top of you. Okay. And that is the it. Phoenix would have helped. Huh? The Phoenix would have helped out a lot with that. Yeah, it would have. But that damn DM made you knock that down a couple rounds ago. It's all right. Good for, I, him. Good for him. Absolutely. It's, it's actually a great decision. It's going to work for me. Well, shut up, Dan. <laughs> 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 Moving on. Uh, let's see whose turn is it now. Good one. Bites of dust there. That was number one, wasn't it? It went flying off through the back end of the ship. Uh, yeah, it was. Let me double check here and zoom in and make sure. Four, three, six. Yep, one is gone. Let me move him off here real quick. Give me a second. Okay. Come on, Shaw Day. See what you got. All right, yeah, and, and just so you know, the, the order here you've got uh, Shaw Day, and you've got Day Hong. Valdera, and then another one of these, um, Periton. Okay, that's the order. So, Sade, what's happening? As okay, you're hanging uh, off the side of the crow's nest with your 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 crossbow sitting there, looking all like a badass with the the hair. She's gonna she's in. she's gonna get herself back onto the crow's nest. I'll I'll say it takes uh just a minute. I'm going to roll for it for you. Roll me a 1d20. That's a 15. Takes 10 foot of movement to get back into where you're in good standing. That's fine. I what am I, I going to do with the other 35 feet of movement I, I have? I don't know. <laughs> it's just decisions. Um, and she's going to go ahead and load another bleeding bolt into her crossbow. Okay, so let's talk about loading and reloading. Okay, mm -hmm. Normally, in the gunslinger, it mm -hmm. takes one attack to load one bolt or one full action to reload something full. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you... I think only... Sh oh, yeah, yeah, it would be a full reload. Yes. So you can do... If you take one attack, you can go ahead and reload just one bolt in here. Uh, it would take two attacks to load in two or a full action to fully load the bow back again. Your choice, however you want to do it. I'll take uh, well, two attacks to roll two bolts. Um, okay, and what then I'll bolt you putting in? Um, two savage bolts. Okay. And then, mm -hmm. uh, and then for my third attack this round, I'm going to launch a savage bolt at it. Okay. Do you wish to do anything with this Savage Bolt? Because you you have all kinds of neat shit at your disposal. I just want you to reach into the bag. No, I still have my Insightful Fighting on, so... Okay. I get... I, I get... Uh, I can use my Sneak Attack on it. That's awesome. And it really yeah. is paying attention to... Mm -hmm. Well, you and someone both, because you're peppering the ass out of this thing, so that's, mm -hmm. that's true. So, okay. So, go mm -hmm. ahead. Um... And roll me an attack, sir. It is within mm -hmm. your range. It is going to be yep. 5, 10, 15, 20. 20 foot up above you. So that is plus 11 to the attack. So. Oh, no. Which puts it around 40 off the ship because the crow's nests are about 20 foot tall. Mm -hmm. so that is a... A 26 to hit. A 26 hits, but it does not breach the creature. Okay. Um, you want to add your, your weapon specialization to it? Or do yeah, it? I'll do that. Okay. It's a D4, right? 
It is. You already used your once a day D6, didn't you? No, I haven't done that. I mean, yeah. it's a 27, so I don't know if that makes a difference. It doesn't in this case, no. Okay. Not quite enough. But you do hit the damn thing. Okay. Go ahead and roll your damage. Damage is bolt stuff. And that's sneak on top. Yeah, Jeremy, what's up? Speaking of savage bolts, did that thing take its bleeding damage? Yeah, it did. It last. Okay. Your, your awesome oh. DM reminded him, buddy. It's all good. So that'll be, it's 1d6 plus 2d6 total. So 3d6. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that's not too bad. Okay. So that's that, plus my bonuses to the damage. So that's a total of 21 points of damage. Fuck sake. Or no, 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 not 21, sorry. Uh, 25 points of damage. No! 25 points of damage? Mm-hmm. Paint me a picture, Sean. What's it look like? Okay. Uh, Sade is going to, like, focus, take a deep breath, aim the, um, the Duncan? crossbow, aim the crossbow, like, straight for the throat of this thing okay. and just let it fly. Okay. As you do, Duncan. the arrow soars sideways and as it gets ready to let out a loud squawk as if mm -hmm. it's communicating back with this one over here that has been calling mm -hmm. out to it from a distance, mm -hmm. all of a sudden it's silenced. Mm -hmm. As you hear a and then it's cut short and you hear a gurgling grotesque sound. As that happens, blood starts to pour down from the creature as it's fighting to maintain its stuff. It's starting to turn sideways and whatnot as one wing starts to twitch as if you've put an ending shot on that. And as that mm -hmm. happens, the creature loses traction, stops flying, and is whisked away off the ship. As the ship has outran it, you've taken down the bad. I need to do mor morale checks for the other three to see what happens next. So, I want you, for just to help, it's roll me a charisma DC, a 1d20 plus your charisma bonus, Sean, just to see how threatening of, of this was. And I'm going to see, I'm going to have more roll versus a DC of that. You're kind of creating the DC that they have to morale pass. No, I'm not wording that, but you guys get what Can I'm I use Okay, I'm gonna say I was like, I'll use my intimidation, but it doesn't really matter. Um, uh, DC is 10. It's not that great. Okay. Natural 17, that one's good. Natural 14, that one's good. Natural 19, yeah. They taste blood and they're not, they're not done with you guys. If anything, now they're pissed. Okay, but great way to end your turn so you have one bolt left in there loaded you have 35 foot of movement and a bonus action what would you like to do you are muted sir you got to get better is, at is, is, is the um other crow's nest within 60 feet of this one well here's what's great about it i'll tell you 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, absolutely. Are you shadow right. stepping as a yeah. bonus action? Yeah, Shade will shadow step as a bonus action to the other crow's nest. Hello, Mr. Fancy Pants. Here we go. What am I quoting there? For inspiration, what am I quoting? The first one that gets it. Well, hello, Mr. Fancy Pants. Three, two, one, nobody. Ash from Evil Dead. Oh. Damn it, you guys. Inspiration was right, was right there. All right, so Shaw Day, a.k.a. Mr. Fancy Pants, is over here now with a bonus action. You have one arrow loaded, and you have... Is that the end of your turn, sir? John's in deep thought about this one. Is your turn over? 
yes, that's my turn. Okay. <laughs> I was like, it's like, waiting? Waiting? <laughs> All right, so good job. I don't know if anyone wants to congratulate him or not, but he just took out the big bad. So there's that. Okay, blood seeker. Done. Okay. And then we said that it was P1 that was going as well. Bam. Okay, good job, guys. Next person up is going to be Dayhan, sir. What's going on over here, buddy? I'm currently 10 feet off the deck because that's all the movement he had. Okay, but, uh, so talk to me I'm about use... 10 foot off the deck. What I'm going to use my bonus action and invoke the behemoth stance. I just got real heavy. <laughs> oh, oh, you're hanging on to it, right? It's grabbing yeah. 10 yep. foot up off the deck. Thank, okay, I was like, what in the fuck are you talking about? Okay, so let's go so, ahead and go to that. Number six, where's his shadow at? Let me see, let's fix that. There it is. Okay, so let's move the shadow to where if it's right here, five, ten. We did that. Okay, so it's ten foot up off the deck. Let's move the graphics around a little bit. Okay, so he's ten foot up off the deck, and he's Dayhawn, got me with him. I'm I'm getting ready to take you up there. Okay, Dayhan, where are you, Dayhan? Way down there, and you are up here now. Did you talk about? What part you were hanging on to? Are you tail feather, leg, arm? What are you doing? Um, I used a reaction as a counter strike when he grabbed a hold of me, if I remember, and so I grabbed him back. Nice. So you're we, right there. Okay. So because I have him grappled and I've just gotten much larger, I'm going to use grappling mastery and do a slam. Okay. So let's talk about this theoretically. <clears throat> you are grappled with the creature. That is correct. Now, if you are entering in a stance and you're taking on the form of the behemoth, how are you doing that when your hands are busy holding on to this thing? It's more the mental focus than a stance. Is, is that what you think? Because I know many times that we've played, you've talked about the arms for the horns and rutted the foot into the ground and took on the actual stance. So you have to... Ma oh, so you're saying that's, that's you hanging on to the legs. Yeah. Yeah. Tell you what you're going to do. Let's just call this what it is. Let's call this a, a pulling off bullshit roll. And I'm going to set the DC at 15. Okay? And I'm going to have you do a performance check to be able to do this dance as you are 10 foot off the ground holding on to chicken legs. Or and let's just see if you can bullshit the DM. Let's play bullshit the DM, everybody. Come on. What was the DC? Because I got a dirty 20. It was, it was a 15. I got a dirty 20. All right. All right, you jungle gym and bitch. Look here. So he's up in the air, and he's taking on the form of the behemoth. You see the hooves come out where the feet would normally be. You can see the arms rounding up, and I will I will give it to you, Danny McGuffey. And now he's going to try that every time. I know he is. And we see this. As the green aura forms around you, and you are heavy, the little pieces of rock begin to float around you, and you can see the behemoth's essence around you. Um, you are super heavy, and it is going to roll. So, you did your bonus action. He's heavy, but this is happening fast. You're going to do a slam because he's grappled. Right, so I'm taking everything I got with the enhanced large creature strength and slamming it to the ground now. Is it fair that I give it him disadvantage on his strength check versus that? Does that sound like it makes up for what you're trying to pull off here? Yeah, I also have uh, advantage on strength saves because of Sutaga. Okay, and uh, Sutaga is because you compelled a duel with this thing? No, that's because uh, the uh, that was when he tried the fear thing on me. Oh, Spearheart. Sorry, Sutaga is not the one I've got up. No, Spearheart. I was like, that's not right. Spearheart. And to read that to me, explain real quick so I can feel good about this and, and move forward. You, you find Amplified Courage where others would find fear. Your character adds their Charisma modifier to any saving throw versus effects such as fear, 
Phantasma Killer, Suggestion, Charm, Hold Person, or any other mind-altering spell that has a wisdom saving throw. Additionally, <laughs> once per short rest, characters triggered by this attempt to defeat their will and lashes out with a mighty vengeance upon those that tried to test their resolve until the end of their next turn, which would be this one, right. your character gains the following bonuses, plus one attack per round, plus half movement, advantage on strength and charisma saving throws, and re-rolls of ones, one each on attacks and damage. And that's a once a day thing, correct? Once a short rest. Once a short rest, okay. So that's pretty awesome. You getting the flavor of this, Jeremy? Yeah, his character's got, he's, he's like taking a travel blood and he's like, ah! He's painting up the face. He's ready to go crazy. Just to keep uh, the Mount Michael Jordan theme, as this slam comes out, the tongue is coming out too. I hope so. Okay, I'm going to roll. Uh, go ahead and roll your thing of advantage. I'll roll for disadvantage. Tell you the highest I get, you tell me the highest you get. And my natural four is not that good, Danny. Tell me what you got. 18 plus 422. Shit's getting ready to come go down, literally. Okay. That was just for the strength, right? Uh-huh. All right, so here comes the, the grapple. All right, so that plus, because I have grappling mastery, I get a 1d4. So 15, 25 total. Okay, now is that the, the, the roll he has to beat? That is uh, for just the slam. Your character can, or your characters learn to slam opponents to the ground once they have been grappled. You can inflict heavy damage and has a chance of stunning and possibly so, stunning even possibly paralyzing your foe when executed properly. A slam opponent suffers 1d6 plus 1d5 plus 1.5 your normal unarmed combat damage bonuses. It lands anywhere you choose within five feet of your location. Well, I'm, I'm good with that because I wrote it. And, but what I'm saying is, do I do an opposing strength to make sure you can't... Is that what it is? It's opposing strength checks. Well, we did that before. Right. And you already beat me, so why did you roll a second one? Just his, just the attack roll itself for the, to make sure he executed. Oh, okay. Was... Okay. I don't think you have to on that. I don't think it requires an attack roll. You just got to beat me on a strength test. And if it does, I'm slammed. Yeah, it doesn't require an attack roll, boss. Oh, okay. Yeah, the strength roll is is it, but it takes your your your, your attack to, to do that. So it's subtracting an attack and placing it with the strength check. It it subtracts one attack from your turn. Okay. So one point five damage for grappling. So with that, let me see if I can make this happen for you here. Um, I'm gonna say as you do, you're able to take him down and throw him down first. Now, mind you, I don't have a graphic to make this guy look flat. But I'll do what I can for you here. Let's say number six. Uh, goodness gracious, there he is. Uh, let's go ahead and get rid of the shadow, because now he's slammed down on the deck of the ship. Okay. Oh, I screwed that up. That's all right. Let's do it this way. And now he is laying on the deck of the ship, and you are... I'll say behind him where you've slammed him down, okay? You've taken the legs, you've thrown him down, bam, he hits the ground. Tell me what the damage is, Danny. Uh, nine points of damage. Nine. <clears throat> and I have to roll versus something to be stunned, right? Yeah, uh, DC of uh, 1d20 plus your character's strength and proficiency bonus. So that would be 13 plus strength and proficiency, eight total. 13 and 8, 21. He yeah. failed. So he did is. He fail by, did he fail by 10 or more? He did. He failed by 11, actually. So he is stunned for 1d4 turns. Fucker. Roll your 1d4. Two. Two turns. Okay, just a minute. One, number six, stunned. Two rounds. Okay. All right. Uh, minus nine points of damage. As healthy as this one is, he's hurting now. He's on the on the deck of the ship, prone and stunned. Um, what are you doing with the rest of your turn? Um, I'm gonna say you've used at least half of your movement here 
and one okay. attack. Worth well, I got 1.5 times my movement this time, so it's all good because what I'm going to do with this one is uh, so it's down. How's its head look in relation to me? Um, bigger. I'm going to drive my knee up into it to make his head come up. I'm trying to get his head up in the air a little bit. So I'm uh, going to use a knee strike. Okay. Rerolls a one because I have that one time per turn. I know. Thank it. Oh, shoot. I'd have had advantage on that anyway. So with that attack roll for uh, regular <laughs> martial arts. He's 11, scrambling to find this shit. It's good stuff. 11, 16, 16, 16. I'm going to use a uh, weapon specialist for uh, critical chance because I got 16 and I've got critical threat. So if I can get it up to 19, 19. you can get it. So if you get a three, it's a critical hit. Oh, three. Okay. So, so uh, it's a 20. And what I think is so great about this, Sean's kind of smiling. And I can only imagine he's going, I did this with just one shot of a crossbow. Why are you taking so long? <laughs> he just, you know, this, I want this to be the conversation that happens in in uh, Aeolus's like bar chambers or anything here later. I just want that to be a conversation. So, so another five. 17 points of damage. Okay. And now that his head pops up, I'm going to use my movement and grappling mastery again to throw it. Your character can throw an appointment opponent. They have successfully grappled up to a distance that equals 10 feet at a minimum, plus additional five feet for every five points you exceed your opponent on a grappling roll. Are you want to throw it off the back of the ship, Danny? No, I'm going to throw it into the one on top of the other one. I'm going to slam them together, see if I can screw them up. Oh, the one that's laying down on top of the uh, shell? Yeah. Okay, so real quick to make sure I understand this before you roll. Um, you used half your movement to bring it down. Okay. And then you slammed it by using an attack. Okay. You used your bonus action to invoke the behemoth, right? Right. Okay, so those three things are gone. Then you took a knee attack to bring his chin up. You're like, come on, buddy. That's attack number two. Okay. Do you have three attacks this turn? I do because I have uh, the. Uh, okay. Um, right. I know this. I know it. All right. So for your third one, you used it to get another grapple, correct? Because you can break throw it again. Yeah. Okay. So roll your strength check with advantage. I'll roll my disadvantage to see if you're able to grapple me. We got to slow this down and go in steps so I know what's happening here. I've got to contain the fuckage, Danny. 32 for grapple. A 32. <laughs> you know, I rolled a natural 20, but I'll, then I rolled a 2 because I'm doing it with disadvantage. So, so you've got a hold of him. Again, what do you have left to use to throw him is my question. I couldn't hear you. What was that, Danny? There was it, did, you, did you say nothing? Did you say nothing? I have nothing left to throw. I think that's what. I think it's what you said. Yeah, that, that's pretty much it. Okay, so that's all right. He's grappled. <laughs> he, he, he's like, I got a hold of him though, so kiss my ass, bro. <laughs> I love D and D, man. That was really good, Danny. It was a good turn. You, oh, actually, no, oh, no, no. It's you're he done. He was stunned. I could have picked him up and threw him with nothing. It's too bad you didn't think of that. <laughs> All right, moving forward. Uh, so Danny tapped into the behemoth Chuck Norris within himself, took this thing, threw it down, picked it up, went to throw it again, was like, oh, oh man, I'm all out of cash. So now it is going to be... That was, that was a good turn, buddy. I'm just giving you shit. <laughs> Let me see here. Dayhan is done. After you, it's Valdera my turn okay and that is going to be paired in number six this turn's done okay valdera where are you young lady over here okay on valdera's turn this is really cool because she's all juiced up 
problem is she has nothing to swing at right now <laughs> she kind of everybody's gone so Ain't she that just about her going, usual luck though pretty much bud pretty much i just let everyone else steal the show you know people can shoot across here if they're fancy crossbows and they can slam people and i just gotta run and swing at shit so let me do my let's do my dash and if i get close enough to attack something I can do a charging assault and get one attack at the end of my, my dash. So I've got 35 foot of movement, so that's going to be 70. Let's see what happens as I rush past. Nope, wrong person. Let's try this again. Valdera, where are you? There you are. Hello. Okay. Rush past Tamara. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. 45, 50, 55, and you know what? I got to stop there because I wasn't taking into consideration that this isn't a flat grid. Then I'm coming down levels of this ship. I'm stair stepping. You know what I'm saying? I'm like bounding this shit like Mario Brothers bounds blocks and <laughs> shit. You know what I mean? Let me roll an athletics check to make sure I'm not like on my face at this point. That's good. Natural 18. I'm okay. I can't get any further than I am. Let me see if there's something I can do at range. Well, there wouldn't be. I did a dash action to uh, try to get to it. So I'm going to say I'm at the top of the steps. I'm at on the steps here. And I still have to come up steps 5, 10, 15, 20 more foot to get to the creature. Um, that is going to be... That's going to be your turn. Nothing more I can do than that. Okay. Valdera out. Okay. Next up. It's going to be Paradon 4. Then Tamara. Then Oma. Then Dauntus and Calibon. And then we start back over Fast Steel after that. Okay. So let's go ahead and go through some of this shit here. Where's the pencil? The pencil, Brian. The pencil. There we go. Okay. So now we're up to P4. Which one is that? That's the one that's tied to Brahmas, correct? And dazed. All right, buddy. And dazed. And dazed. Well, that doesn't mean he's paralyzed. It means he has a minus to shit. Okay. Uh, or without... whatever hypnotic pattern does to it. What's that, buddy? Whatever hypnotic pattern does to it. Okay. Yeah. Dazed. So with her charging up the steps... And this one over here laying on top of this and screeching and trying to get at this protective barrier. It is going to try to... Um, I'm, trying to I'm trying to be theatrical and not be too logical with this creature. Because the big bad is gone. It's, it's sense of morality and purpose. Um, it doesn't sense blood from you so much, um, Merc, as it does from the other ones. And it's not going to... It wants to just kind of be free of you. But it doesn't, you know what I mean? So, since you are only bound to it with, was it your hand or rope? Oh, I've got kind of got, well, the rope is wrapped around its horn, so he's kind of standing there with the, the rope like this, holding it, holding it down, and he's got the other hand over there holding on to the bird's wing. So he's not in physical contact with it, it's just the rope wrapped around his horns. Okay. It is going to try. To reach up and try to claw through the rope and free itself from you. Okay. It's got pretty sharp talons and this is this is decent rope, but it's not ridiculously. You know what I mean? It's pretty good rope, but it's not that, you know, so I'm going to see if this creature. Can... Wasn't that one dazed by uh, what's your name's dance? It is dazed, but dazed just gives it disadvantage. It still has action. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. You know what dazed is. You dazed shit all the time. All right. So let's roll two talent attacks on this, and let's just see what I get to kind of get a feel for how good of an attempt this thing's doing at this. Okay, Jeremy? Okay, with disadvantage, that's a 15 plus my things. One hit hits the rope. Okay. I'm going to roll damage and see 
what that is. If I do real close to a max, da max damage, that's going to be a pretty good shot of getting through the rope. I'll say a standard rope only has two HP. So. Yeah, well, I know, but this is this pretty sturdy stuff. I'm just going to give it a shot here. Now, here's my question. Does it sever yeah. itself from the ship side, from my side, or both? Because this either still going to be horned to the ship or horned to me. Otherwise. From you first. Okay. Okay, I rolled very good on the damage roll. So the one that tethers you to it is broken. Okay. Now it's going to take its second attack. And it's going to try to unbind itself from the ship. And get itself untangled. Now the ropes will still be there. But it's trying to reach up with those... <laughs> as I'm doing my T-Rex imitation... Oh, that's too good. With disadvantage, so it's more like this. Yeah. It's more like that. <laughs> oh, shit. Like a fat natural. cat trying to scratch behind its ear. Yeah, yeah. Natural one and a natural five. So, no. Uh, it is still tethered to the side of the ship. That's one, two. I want to do a bonus action with parent number four. And I believe it had the option to do. Yeah, let's do that. Um, hmm, hmm, hmm. Do I want to do that now? What's the hit points look like on this creature? This one really hasn't been hurt that much, Jeremy. Nothing's really hit number four. Um, it's been grappled and pulled on and done with and shit, but no actual attacks against it have happened yet. Let's go ahead and say that it is going to I'm going to spend its bonus action to do one additional at the rope and see if I can get it with disadvantage Ten. Um, where's that, where's that, hold oh, sorry I'm looking at the wrong one, just a minute da -da 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 -da. Okay, what do you think the AC of the rope would be around its head there, Jeremy? I got a 17 to hit. I know, rope on a standard, it's a 17 strength check to break. Or I guess you could say that that might be... I don't know, I feel like a 15 at the very least just to get up to its horns. Okay, so I'm going to do this and I'm going to do a damage roll. If I roll lower than half maximum damage it's not going to be able to get through it if i roll half or more damage on this it's going to use those sharp talons on the hands off its arm its feet and be able to cut itself free okay and it, and it does after scrambling around and fighting these ropes and shit like that pieces and remnants are still tangled up in around the, the antlers and stuff on it but it has freed itself I'm also going to say that all that maneuvering around took down its movement. I don't have to do that. That just makes sense in this situation. Okay? So once it breaks free, the natural inertia of the ship, it's going to go flying back like 15 foot just because the ship's going, right? So if you want an attack of opportunity on the creature, you can have one, Jeremy. Oh, I'm taking one. Oh, I'm, I'm going to do it. Nice, buddy. This thing ain't getting away so easily. Do you have any feats that make that a better situation for you, or is it just standard? I think it's just going to be standard. All right, go ahead. Remember, you can pump in something on your uh, your touch attacks if you want to also. The 17. A 17 in this situation. I need to take into consideration it doesn't have all of its defenses right now against you. Um... A 17 I was trying hit. to use my feet to get something off my head. I'd be pretty winded right about now. So. Yeah. A 17 hits it. It just doesn't breach it, though. Go ahead and roll your damage, sir. What were you doing? Sword slash or fist yeah. blast? Or what were you doing? It's going to slash at it. Great okay. sword. That's 16 damage. 16 damage. And now the seal is broken and everything has been hurt around the table. Good hit. Damn, sir. I, I want to <laughs> 
Okay. So with that, the creature falls back so many feet and then catches itself. That is number four. So five, ten, fifteen. Catches its momentum and then starts to climb. Five, ten, fifteen. That's going to be, no, it'll be about right ten. So, just for theatrical sake, it is 5, 10, 15 foot off the deck of the ship. I'm going to move the shadow down there. Okay? Now, with overlapping and all those issues, it's hard to do that. But let me see if I can move him behind number three. So that makes it look a little bit better. There you go. So that's what you're actually looking at. The shadow's down here off the side of the ship, 15 foot straight up. So you know the shadow's there. Don't jump in the mud puddle. Okay? Um, that's going to be that one's turn. It's done. That's number four. Okay, let's go on to Tamara. Sean, buddy. Tamara failed her damn save in the blue beautiful thing that was covering up my magnificent map is now gone. What is it you would like to do with Tamara? She just saw uh, Baron Valdera go running like, damn it! Right. Um, what, uh, who is the most injured? Bastille. <laughs> Bastille. Okay, yeah, so Tamara's gonna get as close as she can to get Bastille in range. Okay. I think her movement is just a flat 30, correct? Uh, uh let me double check real quick. Okay. Uh, movement, movement, movement. Uh, yeah, I think it is 30. Yeah, 5, 10, 15. Hey, hey, Sylvan. Hey, Tamara. 20. 25 to go down the steps. And 30 to be right there. That sounds fair. Okay. Yeah. That puts you 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 30, 40 foot away from Bastille. Okay. I lost a um, range of 60, so I just wanted to give you a heads up on it. Okay. Um, and then you said just 40 feet, right? Yes, I did. Okay. Let me just look up the range for this. Okay, one D eight additional to uh, shoot. Um something to her. She have healing word. I wanna think she does have healing word. She doesn't have healing word. Maybe that is something she should look into. Um I guess she's uh how far is she from the nearest creature? Um five, ten, fifteen, twenty. 50 foot. Okay, I guess she's just going to bonus action, uh, well, as, as her regular action, actually, dash to Bastille side. Okay. Um, so, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 to go up the steps. 30... Just get as close to Bastille as possible. I'm going to put you about right there. Yeah, and then... That's all she can do right now. Yeah. So if you're really up to him, when it comes to your turn, Bastille, with him, if you want to hold your um, bonus action or something like that, where you want to be able to just lay a hand on him, I'll let you. Yeah, yeah, that's bonus yeah, action. that's what I want to do. Do a, a hold my bonus action for a lay on hands. Just okay. Just for flavor, yeah. I'll allow that. That sounds fine. Yeah. With me. I don't think that's game breaking in this moment okay uh -huh. so when it's your turn remember high five tamara okay danny all right uh with that that is tamara done and tamara you are where at right here and that is your turn okay next is dead next is oma this will be the second saving throw for oma you guys notice over here on the side oma has tones of gray to her coloration and she's still stuck in this way where you can hear Aeolus over his shores like, go, go on, then wake up. Help her, someone. 
And he's trying to hold on to the ship as he's looking up, and that paradigm is snapping at the damn shell that is slowly fading away. Um, she is still sitting there holding herself, looking down with her eyes just totally fogged and glass over, her breath coming out in frost-like blasts, like she's in negative 20-degree weather, and the color sapped from her body. Um, Jeremy, I'm going to have you do a constitution saving throw for her. A uh, 1d20 and a 1d4. Tell me what you get. Fifteen. Okay, I'm gonna do the DC right now. Ah, I rolled natural sixteen. Um Dayhan. She's having trouble, man. That's her second throw that she's failed. This thing has got her in the depths and grips of something that is very dark, and she is falling more and more into it. And you'll notice that the arms that seem to be coming up around her feet and swirling are growing further up her body. Okay, just so you know, you have a free action. I'll let you shout something at her in this moment if you like to, or something you would like to say to her to try to help her along with this. He yells her brother's true name. Really? Roll a charisma ability check. Got a plus seven for that. So, oh, I know, I know. Yeah. So that stuff. would be. Yeah, that would be a twenty-one. Twenty-one. I guess that's not that impressive with the points with the seven, but. <laughs> it's a 21, and you yelling out her brother's true name, and you have been in this place and met him. Something happens. Something comes into view. As she is still not aware of what's going on, Tomar appears. This large celestial creature at her side. Okay. I'll put him standing right here on the side of the ship. Looks like a big, what we call the Baxter. They're like a behemoth, um, um, buffalo-like looking creature. And you know this is her brother's spirit animal. And as it lands there on this inside this protective shell, standing over top of her, it rubs up against her a little bit like a dog trying to rub you, rub you to get your attention. And it casts a thunder wave spell. Okay. He wants to blast these fuckers off of here. Okay. And it's doing this without her consciously knowing it's happening. Dauntus' yeah. turn is next, right? Who? Dauntus. Uh, yes. For theatrics, is it possible to do both at the same time? You... Because he was going to shoot the cannon with Thunder Wave. No, I tell you, their dishes are too far apart, buddy. I can't. And plus... If he's shooting that cannon with Thunder Wave that low down to the ship, it would be tough. It'd have to go through past the sails and shit like that. It'd be very hard for him to shoot anything with that arcane cannon from that side. Think about all the obstacles that have to go through here and the people. You know what I'm saying? Now, I'm not saying that you don't do it. You could do some Neil Barnhart shit and just drop down a fireball and say, fuck everybody and have some fun if you wanted to. Neil, if you're watching this, I hope you know that I'm right when I say this. But I'm just saying there are consequences of that action. So let me get down here to Thunder Wave real quick. Okay, just want to make sure I'm doing it right. Why is... There it is. Okay, I was like, it better be here. Piece of shit. Okay, we're doing... Uh, Constitution saving throws. Takes 2d8 thunder damage if cast level, which it is cast level higher. It'd be 3d8. 
And how many feet back is it? 10 foot away. Okay. So that helps, especially when you're flying in a ship at about 55 miles, 65 miles an hour. So they need to do constitution saving throws. And it's everything within a 15 foot cube. He will cast it right on her, which is just going to affect uh, the two of them there. The one sling on top of the shell and the one that you've slammed down on the deck. Okay? Constitution for the number three is a fail. Constitution for what is that? Number six? Yes. That, that succeeds. That was natural 19. So it would take half the damage. Let me roll my 2d8 here. For hell of it and for some fun, uh, Jeremy, roll me 3d8 and add a 1d4 to that. Tell me what the damage is. Twenty. Twenty. Nice, buddy. So number three takes twenty points of damage. He's bloody. Nice. And number six takes half that which is 10 and where's number six at talk to me right there and it is beyond blade that one's um, looking rough does it try to blow that one any as well well that's the thing it's not able to move number six because it, it it passed it didn't get that much and probably has to do a few grappling it as well for theatrics but number three failed that so as it's knocked up into the air I'm going to move it back extra foot just feet, just because of how fast we're going velocity wise. Okay? So let me go ahead and do that real quick. That's going to be number three. Not the map, you dipshit. The enemies. There you go, Brian. Act like you've done this before, bud. Number three. Okay. Five, ten. 50. Stop right there, please. Wouldn't I get an attack of opportunity on something coming through my range that way? But you're grappling the other creature still, Danny. I, don't I know, know, and it's what I'm going to use to attack it with. Okay. All right. Listen. No, listen. Listen here. <laughs> all right. I've played nice all night. Okay. And listen, only because, only because in my heart of hearts, I want to see this. Only because in my heart of hearts, I want to see this. We're going to have you do a couple things. If you do this, Danny, I'm going to half your movement on your next turn because you're pouring so much into this. And I'm going to need you to do strength and dexterity checks both. No, 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 no. This is going to be strength with true disadvantage. I don't care about your other shit. You're large, so you have a bonus to the number of your roll but you're doing this of true advantage because this is a large size creature okay now you had a little bit of a lift from the thunder wave getting up underneath them wings a little bit so i'm willing to accept that it fought back so i'm gonna say you're kind of riding that wave you see this fucker coming at you um go ahead and roll me a strength saving throw and tell me what you get. If you do this, so help me God. A 15 plus 8. That's 23, isn't it? All right, hold on. I'm opposing you on this. Because this creature doesn't want to be a bat. Okay? Just saying. And I know it's with disadvantage. Don't even talk anymore. Just just stop talking. I've created a monster with you, Danny. Natural three. Um, paint me a picture, Danny. What's that look like? <laughs> As that thing comes by after he's yelled Tomar. As that thing's coming by, he grunts, Rawr! 
rolls around and smashes the two of them together in a flurry of blood and feathers. Um, and that's the name of the episode. A flurry of blood and feathers. Let me write that down. Promises two free hands now. See, so glad for that. <laughs> Don't you encourage him? <laughs> a flurry of blood and feathers. Okay, I love it when it happens naturally that way. Um, roll damage. I will say the Paradin, as a weapon, does 2d8 damage. That's if you're trying to swing the... It has talons and horns and shit and teeth flying and biting and flapping. Uh, I'm going to say, just for shits and giggles, uh, the Paradin does 2d8 plus your strength bonuses. And uh, roll, the, roll the attack. So that is uh, 13 plus all the attack roll. Um, attack roll would be a 25. Okay. I'm going to take four off that because you are not proficient with Paratum. It isn't on your character description. It doesn't say go to long swords, short swords, and large sized creatures. It doesn't say that in the box. So you get no proficiency bonus, my friend, but it still fucking hits because you rolled that roll. So. Even taking four off of that, you're still hitting. You're not breaching it with the creature, but you did hit it. Roll your 2d8 plus your strength bonus. Eight and since you did it two-handed with that, it's your strength bonuses plus half. Eight plus seven, then. Eight um, plus seven. Plus seven. Eight 13. plus seven? Wait, 15. Yeah. And you are swinging with number six at number three. Oh, God, how do I do this? Just a minute. Number three, you're giving me headaches, sir. We said that was how much? 15? Yeah. And just because you suck, I'm going to do it to both of them. Because that's only fair. It's only fair. Six is minus 15. <laughs> you bitch. Paint me a picture. Number six goes limp in your hands from the impact. What do you... Paint me a picture. <laughs> just because he's in that mode and doesn't even realize it, he's still stomping around the deck, just beating it like uh, Bam Bam with a... Uh, like it's dead carcass. He's still slamming it around. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, so, so that happened. All right. Um, all right. So, number six, when he's done swinging with it, is no longer available. And is gone. Number three was hit, which knocked it off path a little bit. And puts it about right here, once everything catches up with the movement from the ship backwards, and is able to get its wings flying again is about right here. I'm going to say it's about uh, let's say it's probably about between 5 and 10 foot up off the deck. I'm going to bring the shadow down. Um, as that shadow would have passed you, Danny, in that moment as it was flying by, roll me a wisdom saving throw, please. back to that so I know what that bonus is again yeah yeah yep oh it just adds my charisma to it instead so 21 okay that succeeds once again you know the drill these things are reaching out for desperation in this act it's almost like these hands are trying to cling on to your life to even stay part of this battle as they're trying to hold on to the ship through you as these evil necrotic wraith like hands reach out and grab for you as the voices are sound like you're being uh, spoken in reverse. Um, the damage that you will take half of is where's my other d6? Right there. Oh, oh. Okay. Four. Four points of necrotic damage and you are still okay. Okay. 
they are. Where are you at, buddy? Right there, minus four. Okay. Um, with that, it is going to be. Dauntus' turn. And Dauntus. What do, you, what do you think, Danny? What do you think here, buddy? Uh, he's going to do a quick perception check. Um, I'm guessing 1d6 for his perception. Absolutely. Um, a 15. He's looking to see if he's got a clear path to shoot one with the cannon. I'm looking. And he's looking like at his cold shot ability. Like if he's got, if he's got just enough area to get it through, he'll, he'll, I mean, he's a bombardier. He'll give it a shot. You can do the one of the Eldridge Blast Blasts do it, but it have to, you roll a lob it. So it's going to shoot up and over the sail and come down and hit either one of these. But you couldn't do one of the straight shot ones. You could do the Eldridge Blast one out of the cannon. Okay. How far away is this ballista? I'm pointing at the screen like you can see me. Boy, that's genius. Yeah, yeah, buddy. So which one uh, are you looking at? Which ballista? The one beside Sade. How far is that? Could he make that with his movement? I'll tell you in just a minute. Five, ten, climb up five, twenty, twenty-five, thirty. No, he could not. It's almost like a funny episode of Three Stooges. He runs real quick to one side of the ship, and they're like, no, no, the other side. Of the... <laughs> you know what I mean? He's like, oh, damn it. You know, he's trying to run back, get them short little legs. Yeah, and that's about all that he could get out of that perception. I'm not going to ask about the other one. Good. They're pretty close to the same. So They are. Um... You could do a dash action, and I'll let you... Um... Mm... No, I mean, that's... You know what? If you roll a high enough uh, dexterity check, I would let you take a dash and throw one explosion. One explosion. All right. Because I can say you're lighting a sucker as you're running. All right, 1d6 for his dex with 20 or 1d4? 1d20 plus 4. Or with a 1d4 added to it. All right. 15 total. Yeah, I'm going to give you disadvantage when you throw it. If you want to do that, it would be it would be really cutting it close, and you know that. You have the Eldritch Blast shot you could take, or you could try for that, and it's going to be risky. It's up to you. Bigger, we'll take the risk. You want to take the risk. Okay. We'll give you 60 foot here. All right. Okay, so here's where it's going to put you. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60. And I double counted when you had to go up or down steps. Yep. Okay? So that's going to put you 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. 60. There's your 60-foot range that you could yep. probably throw one of those things. He's going to throw for the one closest. Okay. What The only reason this is going to catch it is because the blast area of those is pretty big. So I'm going to let you throw that thing right in here. All right. What's his uh, 1d6 or 1d10 for explosives bonus? Um, with this one you got here, you're thinking really small numbers compared to what it is, buddy. No, I mean the... Oh, okay. What For his throw, you mean? Yeah. Um, at his level, in what he does, I would say he has a plus 11 to attack of this thing. All right, so... Uh, 1d20 we'll plus 11. So that would be a 27 total with this really? advantage. Yeah, I rolled a 16 and a 17 looking at these dots. Hey, do you want to do the lightning blast one that Arc Sound does that, or do you want to do the blast powder one that ignites and just makes a big explosion? Uh... 
I got graphics for both of them, so it's a win either way. You Let's just do the lightning. You look at. You, uh, look you know what? He's seen them use lightning, so instead he's going to use the blast. Okay. So, <laughs> as you chuck this thing, if everything you got with running momentum, which is why I'm letting you get this little bit of extra, he's like just getting ready to hail Mary this, and he yells, Leroy! <laughs> no, he doesn't yell that. But, this is what you're looking at. As this large explosion <laughs> goes off up against the creature, man. I said, kaboom, sir. He does it like he's throwing a shot put, and then as he spins around, he's got the cigar smoke coming out of his mouth. Hell yeah, he does. Don't this is the shit. Um, you ready to know what the damage is for this son of a bitch? Yeah. Okay, hold on. I'm going to let you roll it. But I have to do a check with him. I have a certain kit made up for him that sees how much this was actually worth when he made it. So just a minute. Danny, roll me a 1d6. The pie numbers are good. I got a 5. Okay, that's amazingly good. So it's 5 times... And this is a 1d4. The higher you get, the bigger the dice is, is by the multiplier. Four. Really? Okay. So that is 5d10 plus 5. <laughs> you fucking bastard. total how much 40 uh, 40 you make it sound like it's such a not big deal sir uh that is number four well, where are you at here buddy i gotta find you three four okay 40 Ooh. it is now bloodied and i'm gonna roll a throw for it to see god damn it it is stunned and loses traction and goes backwards. Okay, so number four. Let's go ahead and get rid of the blast powder. It flashed and it was gone. Okay. And uh, let's go ahead and move number four enemies back a little bit as he is stunned. So there. Okay, and that would be the end of Dauntus' turn, correct? Okay. That's going to bring up Caliban. Um, I'm going to just simply spend Caliban's turn running over to Oma and trying to help her snap out of whatever it is that she's in the middle of doing. Okay. Um, for the hell of it, Sean, since you love Genasi so much, why don't you roll me a charisma ability check for Caliban to see how well he performs this this whatever he's trying to do with her. A 1d20 and a 1d4. No kidding, a natural 20 for a total of 23. Okay, because of that, I'm going to give her a bonus on her next saving throw. She'll have advantage because he is trying to assist her. Okay? So that takes care of Kelly Bond's turn. Now I will go ahead and go to Bastille and Drain and both go at the same time. Which uh, I'll go ahead and say, Bastille, it's your turn. And after this, we're going to take a 15 minute break. Okay, guys? Mm -hmm. So I hope everyone, I know it's been a long fight, but I'm trying to move it as best as I can. Just a lot going on. Uh, Danny, what is he doing? We'll step five feet back to Tabera. For just a second. And with a hell bonus action, what are you doing, buddy? Uh, uh, tomorrow we'll pump 15 points of healing into you with that. Uh... Nicely done. Are yeah. you keeping track of that on your end, Danny? Yep. Okay. I think, <sighs> you're, I think you're barely under bloodied now, right? Yeah. Okay, that means you got half a tank of gas. You can probably make a liquor store with that. I'd say you're good. You've only got these two here left that seem to be threatening and remaining. As Aeolus looks over his shoulder once again, looks down at Oma and gives you a very grave look. 
and gives you a confident look like this shit needs to be ended. What is it you're doing? Takes off running, and as he does, he rubs his. Uh, I'm gonna use a. How far? How far away are they? Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty, thirty-five, forty, forty-five, fifty. They are about sixty foot away from you because they are so far up as well. So they are sixty foot away. At least the closest one is. The other one is seventy to seventy-five foot away. Okay. Let me see here. This is going to get crazy with the math because I could use my bonus action. So this is where it gets crazy, Brian. I could use because I have two Please, bonus actions. Because I expect no less from you, sir. But I, I can use two bonus actions, but I got to sacrifice half my movement. However, I can use the bonus action to use a dash that doubles my movement. Okay, so what do you think you should do? That's that's the. Uh, hey, I'm trying to get as close. I, I, I gave you the character. You know the rules. You tell me what the hell happened, and I'll tell you if it smells like shit or not. All right, let me see. I've You've got... already taken a paradin and attacked another paradin with it. So I mean, I don't know what else you have left to prove tonight, Danny. But you go right ahead and try. I'm I'm willing to watch. All right. So I got 40 foot of movement left. You do. I'm going to run. 20 feet that direction. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty. As I do, as I'm doing that, I use my first bonus action, and I'm rubbing his gauntlet. Okay, what's that do for you? Uh, he's invoking a uh, spiritual guardian. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. So let's go ahead and just make it. How big of a circle is that? Uh, spiritual guardian circle is fifteen foot radius. So thirty by thirty. Okay. So just a minute here. Let me do this real quick. Correct. Yep. Uh, five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty. And boom. Oh, it did it black. Hold on. I got to redo it. Sorry about that, buddy. It, uh, yeah. Just a second. I got to make it a different color. What color you want it to be, bud? Yellow, blue, green? What do you want? Uh, yellow. Actually, I think you might have a graphic for that, usually. I usually do, but not on the new Bastille I did. Oh, okay. No. So we'll just make it yellow for now. Okay? And as a free action, he yells Dread. And Okay. That way nobody knows it's him doing it, since it's Dread and then an angelic form of Dread and that pops up. Okay, makes sense to me. It's centered on him, yeah. Right. Okay. Go ahead. Now what are you doing? That's your first motor. All right. I can throw a dagger 60 feet. You can. With a free action. Yes. All right, I'm going to do that. And how high above one of those will it get me? Five foot. I'll do that. Roll your attack. E three. What was it? Twenty three. Okay. All right, using the thieves kit assassin technique you know what's coming with this when vipers on that one okay and that's going to take the rest of your turn correct yes right other than the bonus action i'll have left over because i only used half my movement okay so you're dropping down yep i am go ahead and roll the two attacks as one and let me know what your damage is roll the attacks and let me know what you get i get a damage on both 18 17 plus 14, so 20, 32, and 33. Yeah, it does, does hit. And then uh, damage is 1d6 from each dagger. Not so good on that dagger, so there's four for the daggers, being celestial, and then 5d6 for the backstab, 
Um, six. Twenty-three, and it's critical because of his assassin kit. Twenty-three, um, forty-six plus six, fifty-two points of damage. And also, there is the spiritual guardians because they're in range. Well, I think he has to do it when he at the beginning of his turn or when he okay. enters it because it will, so it wouldn't be automatic on your turn. It'd be at the start of his. Is that universally? Everyone agree with that? Okay. So. You said 52? Yep. Mr. McGuffey, paint me a picture. Just two big viper-sized holes in his back, and with his bonus action, uh, I don't know whether to misty step to the back of the other one so I can keep Spiritual Guardian on it. There's your twin vipers. Or Misty step back to the ship. I'm going to Misty step back to the ship. But just the edge of it so that he's got to move through me to get there. Okay. So after you've done your strike into this creature, uh, you feel the creature go limp and start to fall. So here's the thing, though. All these different things that you have left to do, as the creature starts to fall, you're using your last bonus action because you have two because of your... Cunning combatant feet. You are going to misty step back to the actual ship's edge, correct? Right. Um, and with that, the creature folds up and over as its muscles and its wings twitch because there's nothing for it to grab back and fight you with as the antlers and then the neck just kind of goes limp and hangs as the wings fold in once again and it starts flying backwards with great speed. Just for the hell of it, roll me a dexterity check. To see how far back it flew before you were able to use the misty step and grab one, make sure you're within range of the ship when it does this. Because you um, buried both daggers in it pretty deeply. 19 for the decks. Okay, 19 will get you by. Let's go ahead and do this then. I need to move to my enemy. Sorry, just a minute, guys. Paradin number three is history. And Danny, if his twin vipers comes back, the twin vipers vanish now that he's done this move. And he misty steps back to the side of the ship. Oh, I did the wrong one. Sorry. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I made all of you disappear, not just the one part. Let's try that again, shall we? There we go. And I'll have you misty step back to this part of the ship. Yep. And the spiritual guardian would still be up. Okay. Got her. Okay. And with that, guys, let me go ahead and save this real quick. And because I didn't say it, that's only a one charge because I didn't use all three charges. All three charges of what? Because oh, he can do it. Because it does. That's right. I forgot about that. Yeah. Okay. Just one minute here. Fade this down. Okay. With that, guys, we're going to go ahead and take a 15-minute long break, and we'll come back in here. And the next person going is going to be, I believe, uh, Merck. It will be you as soon as we come back from the break. Is everybody good? All right. Let me go ahead and pause this, and we will do that. I'll see you back here in 15. Okay, and we are back. Uh, Sean is going to be getting something out of the oven here in just a few minutes. And other than that, we are already return and trying to survive the rest of this. And it's going our way. It is starting to go our way. Um, before I jump back into this, anyone have anything they want to add? Alrighty. Let's share screen, do a little magic here. Full screen, advance, share sound, and share. Boom, and we're back. Once again, let me dampen the air conditioner. Oh, that's better. And is the music louder than me, or is it acceptable to you guys? We're good? 
Okay. If it starts to get too intense, tell me. Or just give me one of these symbols here, and I'll turn it down a little bit if we need to. Not a problem. It's restarting. All right. So. Hey, buddy. You got big shoes to fill here, here sir. What are you wanting to do on your turn? You've got these this uh, one creature left, <laughs> correct? Now, others have flown back here that didn't exactly die. We're just outrunning them now. So they are a good maybe 100, 150 feet back behind us as they've been trying to come out of this. But with the big bad actually dead and falling back behind the ship, uh, I don't know if any of those return or give more chase or not. I'll roll for that after a bit. Um, Jeremy, uh, Merc, it's your turn to do some piloting, sir. What are you thinking? How does this last one look? I'll tell you in just a second. Roll perception check. Sixteen. Bloody. Bloody is I'm sure. I would like to move in such a way that I can encompass as many people in a thirty foot radius as possible. I think I could get just about everybody from where I'm standing, minus maybe shot A and Bast. Okay, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. But the problem is, Sade's up in the crow's nest. 20 to 30 foot up above you. So Sade's out of the picture on this one. Um, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, You, hold on, we need to make a decision where you're at. You can't be in between two spaces, damn it. Let's see, you said 30 foot, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. So if I put you here, right here, in an actual space, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 5, 10, 15, 20, okay. That's going to get her, Miyasha, Tamara, Dauntus is going to be just outside of a circle of that. Okay, that's going to get everybody here, and that's going to get Dehan not Bast. Now the thing is, you've got them right on the edge, so your only chance to get Bast is if you would move five foot to the right. And then you'd be able to get, I believe, everybody except for Dauntus and Shaw Day. Yeah, I'll do that. Okay, let's move you here. We're here. So you're right on the edge of the ship here. And that's going to 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. I'm going to give you her. 5, 10, 15. Yeah, I'm going to give you her. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. It's going to give you Bast. Yes. What is it you're doing? You're going to see Brahmas. He's going to drag that sword and raise it up in the air and let out a, a battle cry as he uses his action to channel divinity and it's going to be uh -oh. the uh, uh, Valkyrie's favorite. Fuck yes it is. And remind me how well written this is by please explaining what is going to happen here. As an action you call upon the entity that granted you the gift of extended life to grant you and your allies favor in combat. I have to roll a charisma check to determine the potency of the request and the favor. The effects last until the end of my next turn. Roll your check, buddy. It's a 24. A natural 20. Are 24. you kidding me? That's amazing. Okay, so what so, do you get for having the 20 on it? That is advantage and plus 1d6 radiant damage on the next attack. They ignore okay. damage resistance plus 1d6 damage on all attacks until the end of their next turn. <laughs> and all allies may make one automatic attack or base level cantrip at advantage 
plus one d6 damage. That's great. And that is literally everybody on the ship besides Dauntus and Shadow. Yeah, I've got to do something for you here. I've got to give you some graphics. As the Mechon graphics start emanating from your character, that's just fantastic. And when you blast out with this power, I'm going to go ahead and everybody gets an automatic single attack. That's within range of this. And I'm going to start with, uh, I'm going to do this kind of how I, I'm going to do it this way. Valdera wouldn't be able to utilize this because of where she's at. Okay. But um, with that, Miyasha wouldn't be able to utilize this very much where she's at. Okay. She doesn't have anything that ranged, I don't believe. She don't have any daggers or anything? Uh, no, not. This is a pretty good distance here, bud. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. We're talking like we're talking about 90 foot away, yeah. Okay, now Tamara, I think I'm trying to imagine. Hey, Sean, does she have any spells have a range of like 90 foot, like cantrips, like anything? I don't know what the range is. I doing. I don't think she does, but then again, I might have an outdated um, thing for her. Okay. Um, I don't think Paladins can learn Guiding Bolt, can they? Well, she has Guiding Bolt. I was thinking she, if she, well, asking if she had Sacred Flame. That's something she could do, but... Um, I'm trying to see if she had any other kind of weapon she could throw or anything. Sean. No, I don't know. I you don't know think what? she has anything to do. Do you know what? Valdera does have something she can do. And Dany knows exactly what this is, and she's been saving it for a rainy day. No shit, Nanny. I can do that now. Mm. Okay, you this okay. Okay, fuck. I forgot about this. Jeremy, this is what you see when you're inspired by me. Now, at the same time, Sade, I want you to roll a, that crossbow attack at this creature. And I'm we're gonna see how this goes, because all this shit is happening at the same moment. So you go ahead and roll your one crossbow attack and add to it whatever you typically would because you get one automatic single attack or cantrip. I thought Sade was outside of the range. Oh, you're up here in the crow's nest. Yeah. If you got the crossbow, I mean, it's 90 foot. But I thought I was outside of the range of the effect that it would allow me to. Oh, fuck, that's right. Never mind. Sorry. <laughs> My bad. Okay. So... Let's go ahead and get to... Let's do Valdera's thing and see if there's anything left. So, Valdera has in her possession a lance that is avian in nature. And she actually saved an avian griffin riding lancer and had this made for her as a gift for saving the life of that person. You remember what his name was, Danny? Rivden. Rivden, okay. Because he was also the rider of Yes. Somebody the best has. I can throw this lance up into the air and it will cast the summon volley spell. And it will send down multiple versions of the lance onto an area onto the battlefield as it peppers it with other lances that look just like it. I can use this ability um, twice a day with this lance. And this looks like a time to do it. So... Um, if you would, please, uh, Jeremy, would you look up the spell Conjure Volley for me? And I'm going to go ahead and roll to see how far I can get the lance close to it before it rains down this spell. It's a 27. So I know I can at least throw it 60 feet, basically. So let's say 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60. So that puts the lance within 20 to 30 foot of it. So on 40 foot on, radius, 20 foot high cylinder, 8d8 damage, and a dex save throw to half it. Okay. So now this, it does it, it, and it does an extra d8 when it's cast at higher levels, correct? doesn't specify 
Okay, let me see. It just, just shows up as a fifth level conjuration. Okay. <laughs> All right. So the DC is was my roll. Let me see if this creature can do a deck save versus that. It does not with a natural four. So, 8d8, and then I get a bonus on top of that. It's specific with this spell. It gives me my normal attack bonus on top of that. With Valdera, she has a plus 7. So let me do 8d8 plus 7 to this creature. As I throw this lance up, and as it goes into it and it starts to fade out, all of a sudden it erupts. And many lances, not arrows, but lances that look like it, come shooting down and descend and attack upon this creature. Eight, 11, 15, 21, 28, 30, Thirty-three. Forty points of piercing damage. <laughs> Forty! You son of a bitch! Let's see if that does it. Um, Fifty-six. Damn. It is on death's door. It is clinging on by a thread. Well, I, want, I want to see everybody make an attack. I want to see just how much damage we do with it. Okay, so that, that right there was 46 on my part of it. Okay? Um, with you, Danny, you have one ranged attack that you can make automatically. What's it going to be? Fast actually takes it, the dagger as glowing as they are, draws a rune in the air, and Eldritch Blast. Nicely done, sir. That is a base level cantrip. Now, you get this at base level because you're doing it expediently. Okay, yep. so you just do the minimum of it, but you can roll how many, are there two or three at the base level? Uh, I'll tell you in a minute, I'll look it up. I got like really close right here. Just one. Just It just does one at base level? Yep. Okay. Eight points of force damage. Okay, so that's eight you just did to it, okay. That is enough to take the creature down. But let's continue and pepper this bitch. Okay, Dayhan, what have you got? Anything? Oh, Dayhan? Uh, 30 foot away. Ranged. Not with Behemoth. I don't think you do, do you? Not unless there's a barrel or something he can throw at it. <laughs> there's not back here, no. Oh, is exactly. there a dead turn on? Standing. Is there I'll a dead turn on? He grabs a, uh, one of the ballista bolts to reload the ballista and just chucks it like a spear. He's big enough. Why not? All right. Roll a strength check. Let's see how it goes. Uh, strength would be a 14. I was saying, is there a dead tear on around him? Maybe he can use that one last time. Yeah, right. Yeah, I <laughs> just pick up one of those creatures and swing at him. There's not, unfortunately. So, um, so for... From that, he went to being like chucking that thing around like an Olympian to looking like, you know, uh, what's his name in the <laughs> throw? He's like, oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> I know what you're saying. Yeah, so you see this ballista, he winds up and in Jeremy's like, <gasps> and then he just goes, wow, <laughs> I'm going to say some of the rope got tangled up around your leg. And as you threw it, you didn't disconnect the rope, and it got to a certain point, just stopped, and just fell out of the sky. <laughs> um, yeah, I wish the advantage could have affected that. That would have been cool. I know it, dude. I know it. What well, does? He gets a... No, it doesn't. An on advantage the on the attack. Okay. So, Bastille got his thing. Oh, I had advantage on my strength rolls anyway, though. Well, no, oh, but you get an right. extra radiant damage and shit on this, too, from yours. Roll your 1d6, Danny. On your Eldritch Blast. When he does this, it amps you fucking up, dude. Or more. Okay, and I do as well. On mine. Mine's a six. 
There's 10 more. Uh, who else wants to try to get something in on this? I'm going to say Aeolus turns around and takes fire. With his arcane pistol. Um, he's going to put a grit point into it. And he's going to do a um, bullying shot, which is going to push this thing 15 foot backwards if he hits it. And adds a 1d6 to the damage. Natural 19 on the roll. So Aeolus... He's got advantage you guys if he wants to shoot for a 20. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Nope, 10. <laughs> As he's steering this thing, he looks up and goes, I'm not going to let you guys have all the fun now, am I? And he pulls that pistol out as he's got one hand on the uh, the load star. This takes it and lifts it sideways and pulls it. And a big old poof of smoke goes off. And you see this uh, arcane bullet go through the air. And it has radiant damage added on to it. And he was using a lightning round. He has it loaded with four rounds. And me and Neil talked about it just earlier because he was playing this character. And uh, we're going to give him that. So it's 1d10 for the bullet. And then it's 1d6 for the lightning, and then 1d6 for your radiant on this shot. And he's using the bullying shot, which adds to it as well. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 13, plus 6, and uh, no, 13 plus half, and a 19, 13, uh, which is 6, 13, 18, 24 points of damage on that hit. As when he hit, when he hits this thing, it's just you see feathers and blood, like Danny said. He just biff, <laughs> right? Uh, who else? Tomar. Um, he would not be attacking at this moment. He is spiritually trying to protect Oma and bring her back. Um, Medelia drops the actual force field, and she is going to let off with. Just one second here. Sorry, just one minute, guys. I got to find this real quick. Firebolt. And this firebolt on a hit, 1d10 fire. And she has something a little bit special that she does with this. You guys don't know much about her, not much at all. Let me roll her attack here with advantage. That hits and breaches. We're rocking it right now, guys. 1d10. That's 5. Um, plus half of that is 2. 7. 14 points of damage from her fire bolt that she casts out from her hands as it comes out from underneath of her sleeve and ejects upwards towards the creature. Um, that's everything I think there is there, guys. Grand total of 102 damage. Yeah. Yeah, this 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 creature is just peppered with things. Um, just because you're the one that orchestrated this, Jeremy, I will let you paint me a picture, sir. What does it look like when this thing gets hit by this stuff? Since all of this happens in the span of six seconds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That thing is not quite pink mist and feathers, but it is... Pink it looks like feather. something that got ripped up by a shark. Okay. Nice. And I'm hoping with the trail of feathers and blood and gore that all the other ones behind are like, uh, no. They, they, hopefully they're getting the point. Okay. Well, with that, let me go ahead and uh, do some graphics things here. Is number four is eliminated nicely done all right so with that the other ones that were clinging back behind um dauntus continues running up to the back of the ship and looks out through one of his spy glasses that seems to be ridiculously long with several different smaller lenses that encompass the outside of it it's very uh, steampunk ish looking and as he says i believe i've taken care of it dave they're all dying off back there. Hang on. And he goes over to Aeolus and takes the wheel and helps. Aeolus turns around and um, picks up Oma and begins to military carry her down across the ship to go into his loader, lower quarters. 
he yells back at Dayhan. He says, Dayhan, take over. Um, um, Sade, seeing Aeolus carry Oma, jumps off the crow's nest, so it falls onto the deck and throttles him over. Okay. When you land on the deck in front of them, um, what is it you're saying to Aeolus as he tries to rush around and past you to uh, get her down below quarters to try to help her however he can? She's not saying anything. She's just super focused. Her eyes kind of turn a little bit uh, yellowish from the... Uh, Okay. Yeah. Um, as that happens, I'll give you guys a moment to react and interact with each other here before we wind this up for the night. Um, at that point, you happen to notice now that all this is over, said, and done. That the ship itself did take damage during this ordeal. Okay, the sails did take some a bit of roughness to them. Um, there were several trees that Aeolus smacked. I had rolled some rolls to see how he was able to maneuver and do things in this situation. Um, the ship is not wrecked, but the ship will need to land somewhere soon to get shit back in order. I understand this probably isn't fair since he wasn't here to play his character and all this and we kind of put him there. But I think that Bass would probably take a cheap shot at Caliban. You're, off, you're awfully big to have hit under that shield the entire time. Okay. Um, <clears throat> as that happens. Because I've just got to play what's happening here, not. No, I get it. You know, outside of game. With that roll, he would walk over close to you, closer than five foot. And this is Dayhan saying this or Bastille? Bastille. Okay. Looking down at you, um, with an extraordinarily gruff look on his face and in a deep guttural voice he says no damage befell the captain did it as you were out puppeteering around i made sure we stayed in the air and you're welcome it looks like medallia had the, held the shield you just hid under it how would you see anything when you're laying face down on the floor because you can't control your own magic? He crosses his arms and takes back and looks at you for a minute. It gets silent on the ship as this happens. Um, Dayhan would probably say something and try to intervene and stop this and make it more of a serious situation. Intervene if Dayhan... Go ahead. I'll let you play Dayhan since I'm already playing one side of it because. Okay. So Dayhan walks up and he takes a tuft full of some of that rope that had snapped and broken off and he shoves it into the chest of Caliban. And he says, there's other things right now to do with that kind of anger. I don't know if you've looked around or not, but the captain's gone. And Oma doesn't look well. Why don't you mend these things for now instead of trying to tear each other apart even further? And he looks over at you and he just rolls his eyes and he just kind of shakes his head. I thought we were past this. And he walks off militantly as he's taken that fatherly approach to this kind of thing. Dayhan has deep-seated deep roots in being the first mate when shit gets right. serious. And... I think that's pretty much what he would have done there. What do you think, Danny? Oh, absolutely. I just didn't want to... would have okay. been weird if I'd have done the same thing. Now, I'm going to roll roll to do like a um, intimidation just to see how well he comes across on this. Okay, that's a natural 19. He's got a plus 7 on charisma, so... So that's 26. That beats a DC of 25. That's extraordinarily high and poignant in this moment, which is great. That really plays into the, my hand here in this situation. Sometimes I like when that shit happens. So with that, Bastio understands yeah, maybe sometimes I don't need to point out these kind of things. Um, I would say in Caliban's instance, he drops this. You know he can be a bit of a, uh, a... I don't want... It's not that he's a smart ass, but he doesn't let things go very easily. And when he has that rope put into his hands, 
he takes the note and goes over there and tries to fix some of the damage that Brahmus had to carry out to get that thing wrapped up in the in what was left. So, you like kiddo? I'll see you tomorrow. Okay. So with that, um, Merc, is there anything your character is saying now? I don't think there's anything he's saying. I think more or less he's assessing the damage that's been going on. He's trying to help fix what he can. Shifting okay. over into his usual workhorse mode. Okay. Um, and Sean, you don't you're not say anything. You're just watching Aeolus carry her down to the to his own quarters. Are you following? Uh, sh yeah, she's gonna follow, and she might uh, call out to Tamara or to come down. Okay. As you do, she's looking around and she looks over at Silwin. As Silwin gets up off of one leg, um, roughed up quite a bit from the lightning strike. And stuff like that. It's kind of beating herself up. Silouan looks up at Tamara spitefully a little bit and brushes off her shoulder and throws her hair over her face. She goes, I'm fine. Just go tend to Oma. I've I got to stop missing. She's beating herself up. Um, with that, um, Tamara and Sade follow Aeolus as he carries the gray, seemingly lifeless body of Oma down below to try to help her in some way um with that i think we'll go ahead and end tonight and we'll see where we're going to land this thing if we can get close to the crescent cradle from where we are if he thinks there's enough juice in it to get us there after the battle we'll see next time we play that sound good everybody okay so once again it was a really fun one super fun and i hope everything goes okay i'll roll some rolls for oma and see what we can get going there um, as always, I'm Brian Kynes with everyone else. Um, if you're watching these videos, thanks for checking them out. Leave comments. Let us know what you think. Take care, everybody.